Good evening and happy Sabbath to you all. I welcome you into another segment of Wonder of Sunset this evening. And uh, wherever you're watching from across the globe, I welcome you in a very special way this evening. And I pray with God's leading that you will speak to us in a very special way as we ponder on God's word and he will lead us through into these Sabbath hours. Just before we dive into God's word, I shall ask everyone if, if we can bow our heads as I offer a word of prayer. Lord, we pause to say thank you this evening and we want to thank you for your leading for the last six days. We have arrived to another Sabbath and we pray that you'll be with us and you will speak to us this evening. May the thoughts that we will share from Scripture will help us to make a decision to be with you and to be under your control. We thank you for answering our prayers. We thank you for giving us this segment of Wonder of Sunset that we want to hear from you. And this is our prayer in our most precious name we pray. Yes, friends. I want to take us through the Bible this evening in a story based in Exodus chapter 33. In the Old Testament, the book of Exodus chapter 33, it started off the command to leave Sinai. After they leave Egypt towards the Promised Land, they were camping, the Israelite or God's people, they were camping in Mount Sinai and there was a command to leave Sinai. So friends, as we open the Bible in Exodus chapter 33, verse 1, it clearly stated that then the Lord said to Moses, depart and go up from here. You and the people who were brought out of the land of Egypt to the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, to your descendants, I will give it. The command to leave Sinai. Friends, we know in this story, the Lord huh, was willing to let the people leave Sinai, to head uh, to the promised land, but at a cost. Going to the promised land? And God was really willing to let the people leave Sinai at a cost. And in Exodus chapter 33, verse 2, we look in the scripture this evening, we found out that in verse 2 it reads, And I will send my angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Etite, the Perizzite, the Evites and the Jebusites. We find out in the story that, um, or in the first two chapters, that he, or God himself, that he would not be with them. Because I will send an angel to lead you to the promised land. He would not be with them. But the question we need to ask this evening, why God will not be with these people. As we open another Sabbath, we welcome another new Sabbath, the first Sabbath of this month. And we know that God, in His own time, said that He would not be with His people. But of course, we need to ask why. So friends, in order for us to answer why God will not go with his people to the promised land, I want to take us back to Exodus chapter 32. In Exodus chapter 32, there is a story while the people of God are camping in Sinai. In verse 1, in Exodus chapter 32, verse 1, clearly stated that now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down, from the mountain. 
the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods, shall go before us. For as for Moses, for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Friends, this evening, in Exodus chapter 32, we found out there was a crisis. There was a crisis. The people towards Aaron, because the crisis so says this evening that there was an act of open rebellion against the covenant God. And offense, God himself, he took it very seriously. An open rebellion. Make us gods. We don't know our leader because he was delayed. And Moses, uh, this evening, long stay on the mountain caused unrest among the people. Fearing the permanent absence of their leader, they fall back into adultery that perhaps many of them had practiced in Egypt. What a story. No wonder God told us in Exodus chapter 33, he would not go with them because uh, there was unrest among the people, fearing the permanent absence of their leader Moses, they fell back into adultery. It was an act of open rebellion against the covenant God, an act of open rebellion. So friends, this evening, as we look at the component of the story, the Hebrews and the mixed multi-order, had come out of Egypt with a nature where nature was worshipped in the form of hundreds of gods within a complex of spiritualistic religion. So once they come out of Egypt, so in Egypt where nature was worshipped in the form of hundreds of gods, no wonder in Exodus chapter 32, we found out that the people told Aaron, make us gods because he will save us and he will take us through to the promised land. Oh friends, what a sad scenario. The people of God, an open rebellion against the God of this universe. And in verse 4 in Exodus chapter 32, the story continues. And he received gold from the end and fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. Then they said, this is our God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Friends, they turned away from God himself and they turned to a molded calf and they said, this is your God. This is your God. What a story. What a story for us, friends. So tonight, as we look into the story, once we know that the people turn away from God. But I want to share with us this evening, the people lose sight of the God who brought them out of Egypt. People lose sight of their God who brought them out of Egypt, the God who saved them from bondage, the God who is leading them all along, the God who prepared their crossing in the Sea of Red Sun and was walking before them in the pillar of clouds and the pillar of fire. Friends, in the story, the people lose sight of their God. What a sad scenario. What a sad scenario, friends, when people lose sight of their God and God is on time. I will not go up in your midst. We found that in Exodus chapter 33, verse 3, go up to land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst. I will not go with you. Moses, please, Tell the people, I will not go up in your midst. 
lest I consume you on your way, for you are stiff, naked people. You turn away from the covenant that I made with you. Oh, friends, uh, when the people heard this, uh, we found that in Exodus chapter 33, verse 4, when the people heard this bad news, they mourned, they mourned, and no one put on his ornaments. Friends, the people mourned because they lose sight of the God who brought them out of Egypt, prepared the crossing in the sea of friends, and was walking before them, said to say, when the people heard uh, that God will not lead them, God's absence, they mourned, uh, and no one put on his garments. So they turned to God, uh, friends, in deep sorrows. They reformed. They talked to Moses and said, we can continue to go on without him. So friends, uh, as we look at the story this evening, one thing is clear. We found out, uh, although that the covenant has been broken, God would keep his promise to defeat the enemies uh, of the people and grant them a new home in the promised land. Although the covenant had been broken, but the covenant still stands that God will defeat the enemies of the people and grant them a new home in the promised land. It reminds us of the kind of God that we serve, friends. It reminds us that God has prepared something new and something better for his people. He also found out in the story that, but they would enter into the promised land without God, without Him, without Him into the promised land. I would say this is a defeat to the people of God. And this raises a major question for Israel and for Christians today, my dear friends. The question is, anything worth doing without God's presence and blessings? Is anything worth doing without God's presence and God's leading? Because as we look at the picture of God in the story, we found out this covenant God, He had brought them out of Egypt. That's for sure. He brought them out of Egypt. And he would not go with them into Canaan, the land of milk and honey. The journey, we also found out, the journey to the promised land would be meaningless without God, friends. The journey to the promised land will be meaningless without God. Oh, what a story. And even in Egypt, when the people were slaves, God had been attentive to their cries for help. In the experience in Egypt, uh, while they were slaves under bondage in Egypt, God had been attentive to their cries for help. No wonder they were shocked to hear that God is not with them to the promised land. And friends, if they moved without God, their cries, their sorrows will go unheeded. So they turned to Moses, Moses, please make us fresh again. We want God to be with us. They empty themselves, they take away all the ornaments, they cried to their Lord uh, and said, Please, Lord, uh, we want you to continue your leading in our lives. Yes, friends, the question that I want to raise with us this evening is anything worth doing 
without God's presence and blessing? What about if God's presence and blessings is with us? What joy it brings? Is anything worth doing without God? It's my prayer this evening that there are times when God in His own mercy withdraws from us. He never forces Himself upon us. But as we look at this story, it serves a reminder to all of us that our God is gracious and merciful. Despite, despite our status, as we turn to other gods, as we move away from that relationship with Him, God is gracious and merciful and is waiting for us to come back to Him this evening. Friends, as we open the Sabbath, as we journey with Him in His holy hours, is there anything good without God in your life? Our God is gracious, who is merciful, and is ready to start new with you. And are you willing to give your life to Him? And this is our story, friends. As we look at the story in Exodus chapter 33, this is your story and my story, that we turn away from God most of the time. We go on our own way, and there are times we stand away from Him, but our God is gracious, our God is merciful, and God is willing to be with us. Friends, a journey to the promised land without God is a defeat. A journey to the promised land with God that we are safe and secure under the arms. So this evening, there is another journey, our journey to the promised land. It begins with the Sabbath. It begins with us this evening. So I invite each and every one of us that we will let God take the lead in our lives because He is gracious and He is merciful that we can turn to Him and not place. May the Sabbath bring a difference to my life and to my family because you are so gracious and you are so merciful that you will continue to lead us, lead my family, lead my life to the promised land because without you, I will be nothing. Without you, I will be lost. Without you, life won't be the same again. So this Sabbath, I want to be with you. Because once you lead us, we are safe under your care. Friends, listen to the words of this song that will help us this evening to be with Him because our God is gracious and merciful that we can turn to Him today. Lord, there are many gods around us, but for sure, You are the one who saved us from the bondage of sin that you are gracious and merciful. Listen to the words of this song this evening.
Sing it with me now, Jesus. Yes, friends, we thank God this evening because He's so gracious and merciful and He's ready to carry us through, not into this world, but the world to come, to the promised land, because without God, we are nothing, but with God, we are safe and secure. Just bow heads for a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you that you'll be with us again in this Sabbath house. We ask for your presence to lead us uh, in our family, in our day-to-day -day takings. And may this Sabbath, Lord, uh, we want to be with you and listen from you. As we look back, uh, we want to thank you for the last six days. And we pray, dear Lord, this Sabbath will bring a difference in our lives. Uh, and we will look to you and say that this is our Lord, uh, who have saved us from the bondage of sin, and he will take us to the promised land. We thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. We thank you, Lord, that you'll be with us again this, this Sabbath house. And this is our prayer. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.